The fifth reaction, the fifth reaction in the league will be halogenation. Halogenation, of course, is going to follow the same mechanism and same every step as all the electrophilic addition. You will have a halonium ion, X plus. This X plus can be Cl plus, Br plus, I plus. We don't take F plus because fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table and the plus charge on fluorine is not stable. So generally, fluorination is not done through this mechanism. We have other methods to add fluorine on the benzene ring. But this will be only for chlorine, bromine and iodine. Now if we do it, then this X will be added on benzene and H plus will be gone. So X plus is going to substitute X plus. This will be a substitution reaction. So halogen is being added. This is called halogenation. Um, the question is, how we, are we going to create X plus? And the answer is, if we take XX and we take AlX3, then we get, get X plus and AlX4 minus. This is how we create X plus. Suppose we have chlorine. We have ClCl and we take AlCl3. Now aluminium, as we have seen before, aluminium has an empty orbital. The 3p orbital of aluminium is empty. And I'm not going to show you again in the box diagram. I'm going to draw the empty orbital of this. And as you know, chlorine has three pairs of lone pair. Both the chlorine will be have three pairs of lone pair. There will be huge amount of repulsion between these two chlorine atoms. And some amount of electronic density will be moving from chlorine to aluminium. Now, the, in the entire of the organic chemistry, you have to visualize the electronic density as wave. We don't have to consider the particle nature of electron. We have to consider the wave nature of electron. Now, these things must be very intuitive and very natural to you. If you have electronic density here, and if you bring an empty orbital beside it, the electron automatically will be start gushing into the empty orbital. The wave trying to fulfill the entire the space around it. So whenever you have a situation like this, you have an electron here, we bring an empty orbital here, this thing will very naturally, intuitively happen. You can't help it. Electron will start to move from the orbital of chlorine, filled orbital of chlorine to the empty orbital of aluminium. You don't have to question it. It must seem to be very natural to you. So this wave will start from chlorine to aluminium. There will be a certain amount of electronic density between chlorine and aluminium. That means there will be a certain amount of bond between chlorine and aluminium. aluminium. When certain amount of bond will be formed, certain amount of energy will be released. And that certain amount of energy will be utilized to break this bond further. When a bond is, bond is formed, energy is released. Now this is a bond between chlorine and chlorine. Now that energy which has been released from this newly small bond of small bond order that has been formed between chlorine and aluminium will be utilized to break this bond further. When you break this bond, the electron moves towards the orbital of chlorine. This chlorine which is giving its electron because as it gives its electron, it will develop slightly positive charge. Now to fulfill the vacancy of electron that has developed on this chlorine, the electronic density from this bond will move towards the orbital of this atom. So in turn, this chlorine atom will become electron deficient. So this chlorine is actually supplying the electron of this bond into the orbital of empty orbital of aluminium via its own orbital. So it is giving electron from its orbital and pulling electron from the bond. It's giving more of the electron into the orbital of aluminium and pulling more of the electron from this bond. So after certain amount of electronic transition, the much of the electronic density from the orbital of chlorine will move on between aluminium and chlorine, forming a bond between aluminium and chlorine, and the electron of this bond will be moved away. That means it will be transmitted through this chlorine into the empty orbital of aluminium. So this poor chlorine atom will be devoid of its one electron that it faithfully gave to this chlorine, sharing, a bit, in, a, sharing in a covalent bond. So this chlorine atom will be devoid of an electron resulting in formation of Cl plus. So, and this chlorine will move on to aluminium taking one of the external electron, that means the electron of this chlorine. So this will go as Cl minus. This will go with AlCl3 forming AlCl4 minus. But this is how AlCl4 minus will be generated and this is how Cl plus will be generated. 
this Cl plus will come in here, act as the electrophile, substitute H plus. This H plus will come to AlCl4 minus forming HCl and AlCl3 will be regenerated and hence it's a catalyst. AlCl3 will go further to more of chlorine molecule, breaking more of chlorine molecule and again it will be regenerated so it will small amount of AlCl3 will be required because it is regenerated at the last. So we will get a chlorobenzene in case of chlorine or if you take bromine and iodine we will get bromobenzene and iodobenzene and of course we will have HCl as a side product. This is how halogenation will be carried out and this is how halonium ions are created. It's not a big deal, same mechanism. All you have to understand is how this electrophile is being generated. Otherwise the mechanism is the same as we saw during the very first phase of this uh, topic. So that is halogenation and that is a broadly five kind of halogenation that is in the syllabus. Of course, this is not the bound of electrophilic addition reaction. There are other kind of electrophilic addition reaction which will be very natural and you can cope up with it if we understand broadly these five categories of halogenation reaction. Mostly the other halogenation substitution will be, uh, other electrophilic substitution reaction will be extension of what we have seen here. We will be seeing some example of what extension JEIT, JE can offer you in exam. Um, but broadly, by and large, this is, these are the five electrophilic addition reactions that those are in the text. Those mostly have been asked in exams like AEEE, WBJE and other exams of those levels. So this is halogenation, right? Now let's do some problem. As, uh, can be asked as an extension of this topic. Suppose I have benzene. I add Cl2, AlCl3 to it. Now looking at it, you must identify which reaction is this. This is the last reaction that we have seen that is halogenation or in specifically this is chlorination since chlorine is the halogen here. So Cl2, AlCl3, you must understand and you must know by now that AlCl3 is a Lewis acid. So uh, it will accept the electron from chlorine and we break chlorine actually in Cl plus and Cl minus. Cl minus is a stable because chlorine is a select, chlorine is a larger atom. The charge density on Cl minus will be less. The charge density will be less and plus chlorine is electronegative atom as well. So Cl minus is stable and Cl minus is not going to react with this uh, benzene because both are electron rich and this discussion we had previously. So Cl plus will be the unstable and reactive part that will be created. So Cl plus will come here and Cl plus will get attached substituting H plus. So uh, the product we can write very easily. Chlorine and as benzene is symmetric, right? All the positions of carbon are same. I could have added chlorine at any position, but it seems good, looks good when we add chlorine like this. So we have chlorobenzene form. Now, if we add sodium and ether to this, then what would we get? Well, as such, I have not taught you this reaction, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you know it. Then, uh, or maybe, uh, or even if you don't know it, by the time you go to give ITJ exam, you must know it. Now, this reaction, if you are able to identify it's well and good, otherwise have patience, we will see this reaction eventually. And what I'm trying to show you is, no one is going to ask halogenation, only halogenation as a reaction in organic. There's a very good uh, structure of all the reactions and all those reactions are asked in a proper chronological order. Any reaction from any chapter can be clubbed together and one question can be formed and you, will, you may be asked to, or to find the final product. So this reaction as such is a part of hydrocarbon and if you have studied hydrocarbon you must be knowing this is um, Wood's reaction. And what happens in this is when you have Rx and you add sodium, when you have sodium you can't take polar solvent because sodium is very reactive so you have to take you can't take polar protic solvents, you, may, you need to take polar a protic solvent. So ether is one of the very fine polar a protic common solvent. What happens is you get RR from Rx. In case you don't know, don't worry yourself over this. You will see this eventually. But here the R, the R part is phenyl ring. And when we take 
uh, chlorobenzene and if we want to carry out Wood's reaction with this, then what we will get is, we will get R, R. That means pH, pH. We will get phenyl, phenyl. That means this is biphenyl. And then we can do a hell lot of reaction on biphenyl. We will do it. But once we will study more of the reaction, then we will solve those long conversions. Halogenation is over. Now, similarly with nitration, suppose I take benzene ring and I write it NM. And from NM, like you have, must know, this is nitrating mixture. A nitrating mixture carry out nitration. And if you carry out nitration, you will get nitrobenzene. From nitrobenzene, if I want to get amine, now amine is a key in organic chemistry. This NH2 group is a key key because it leads to various other function groups in single steps. As we will study further, you will understand this amine group is very important in any kind of conversion. From amine, you have various paths leading to various function groups and theoretically, we can get any other function group from amine group. So, amine is a very good place to start conversion or to get reach to any other function group. So, generally in organic, what we do is, whatever we have been asked to convert or whatever we have been asked to form, First, we try to get amine, and from amine, we have a standard path, we have standard procedure, we know the way to other function groups. So, it is sometime what uh, so from if, we, if so anything has been asked to form from benzene, what we try to do is we form aniline. This is aniline. If you don't know, you know from now. From aniline, we know uh, there's a Sandmeyer reaction that you will be studying. Uh, in the chapter of amine, Sandmeyer reaction leads to various other reactions. And apart from Sandmeyer reaction, there are various reactions on amine that leads to other function groups. So it is very convenient to start with amine to reach to any other function group. So from nitrobenzene, how to get amine? Now there are various ways. If you, this is basically reduction as you can see. You are removing oxygen and you are adding hydrogen. So this is reduction of nitro group. The reduction of nitro group brings about an ester group. So aniline is formed when you reduce nitrobenzene. Now reduction of nitro group can be formed, can be done by n number of reagents. If we add simply s 2 pd this will carry out reduction. And one of the most common and important reagent is SnCl2HCl. Now this is a very important reducing agent and this is a selective reducing agent. We'll talk about this more in the chapter of carbonyl compound. Uh, where this reagent is used in Stefan's reaction in the preparation of aldehyde. So for time being, let's not worry about the importance of this reducing agent. Let's consider this as any other reducing agent. And this reducing agent will reduce nitro group to amine group. From nitrobenzene, we'll get aniline. So uh, this nitration will be an important reaction when we want to get a NSO group because from benzene on benzene there is no way leading directly to an aniline that means NS2 cannot be directly added rather NO2 group can be added on benzene so what we do is first we add NO2 and then we convert this NO2 to aniline so this will be an important part in most of the conversions that we will see as we grow big a few months more then uh, so this nitration will play an important role in those conversions. So this we must bear in mind.